All right, so here I am with Elliot James Landridge, good old friend of mine. He's over here in LA promoting his latest movie, Northern Soul. It's premiered out here, it's been at TIFF. So Elliot, over to you, tell us about the film Northern Soul. Okay, so Northern Soul is it's a coming of age drama. It's about two young guys being brought up in, in the north of England. My character's a kind of a He's a bit of a loser and he basically gets brought into Northern Seoul and it changes his whole life. Um, and it's, yeah, it's a, it's a pretty dramatic film, I guess. Um, but yeah, it's an interesting one. Set in the 70s, it's, a, it's about a, a dance movement and uh, yeah, it's cool. No, it is. It's a really good film. I got the opportunity to see it with Elliot. Um, what day? Friday, I think it was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's incredible. Okay, well, in the film, you had to go through a long and arduous process um, in terms of getting ready for the character, the role, um, waiting around. So can you just talk us through the process, what you went through? Let's start with character first. Sure. I mean, um, so my character, he's, he, as I said, he's, he's a bit of an outcast. He's not that popular. Um, he's meant to be from a, a working class background. He's, you know, he's... he's, he's He's this kid that goes to school and he's he's bullied and he was I wanted him to be emaciated and look look kind of uh, run down and a bit kind of ill. That was the kind of look I was going for. And then obviously he goes and he he learns to dance and he does all these things. Maybe doing loads of drugs. Um, so it was important to have that kind of thing where he he looks like he's got an ounce of fat on his body. Um, so yeah, it was a long that was a really long process having yeah. to do that and had to lose that weight, but. Not only that, it's because the film's set in the seventies. I um, I needed the hair, so I needed the kind of long the, the yeah. mullet was very important. Um, but then there was also like, the action as well. So there's kind of a, quite a few elements and yeah. learning to dance. It was a lot. It was, honestly, guys, it was. It's incredible the amount of things that Elliot had to to go through to prep for this role. Character-wise, it's set in the north of England, which is more my accent, and as you can tell, Elliot doesn't sound anything like me. And it's not a very easy accent to, to master. So, how did you go through? How did you go through the process of learning that that accent? Um, I did. I did. I mean, for me, it was the first accent I'd had to do, so um, I wasn't sure what to do. I kind of tried loads of different things. One yeah. of them was. Um, I went up north and I stayed with Elaine Constantine's uh, parents, the, the director. They're from where the film's set and um, stayed with them and I kind of just, I sat in the local cafes and I, I just wanted to watch and see and like how people interact if it's different and their voice and there's kind of a, there's always a different tune to a different accent and it was that was the hardest thing getting that and um, once I had that I would, I'd have the script and I'd phonetically write it down wow. so that even if I couldn't freestyle and kind of do the accent on a whim, I could I could look at the script and I could read exactly what it was meant to sound like. Um, but it was it was tricky, and yeah. um, I did get told quite early on by one of the voice coaches that I would never get there. So it wasn't an easy one. Um, <laughs> well, I can tell you guys, he did get there. Take it from a true northerner. And for <laughs> any of you guys out there who wonder what Elliot means by phonetically. This is a, a technical term that you get taught in dialect classes and accent. It's the IPA, the International Phonetic Alphabet. You get taught a lot of symbols which give you the certain sounds for different accents, so like the sh, ah, uh, and they all come with different symbols. So when you're dissecting a script, if it's an accent that's foreign to you, like say if it's an American accent and you, and you need to go into that, but you can't quite, you just want to nail it down, you put these symbols above it, above the script and it'll it'll allow you to just know where to place a voice and what kind of consonants and vowels you need to hit. It's very, very technical. It works for some actors, it doesn't work for other actors. Me personally, I've tried both and I prefer to to just copy. Copy is the best way. I look at, uh, I'll, I'll go like Elliot did, he went up north and he did that. I will, I would do the same, so I'd live wherever my character was from for two, two weeks, three weeks, however long I had, and I'd just live in that, in that world. But yeah, the process, weight. Now, Elliot lost a considerable amount of weight for this show. I mean, you can see, guys, no offense, Elliot, he's not exactly like <laughs> a, a, a big lad anyway, so he really did, he, he lived inside that world. And for anyone who knows what it's like to to lose weight and put on weight, it's, it's crazy and he does crazy. So how did you handle that? Um, 
it, again, it was something I hadn't done before and yeah. um, it kind of gave me a little insight into what it's like to be someone that struggles to keep their weight down and to have mm -hmm. to watch every little thing that you eat. So I now got way more, you know, I, friends that struggle with their weight, I've yeah. got much more sympathy now, but it was, it, it was really hard. I, um, I basically just ran every day. I didn't eat any carbs. I would le like literally eat carbs like maybe once a week, um, salad and, and uh, meat. So it was pretty much just torture, really. Yeah, <laughs> um, it, it was horrendous. But you know, it's it's all worth it when you know that's your aim and that's what you've got to do. I just find that that focus and that mm. and knowing that's your goal and that's yeah. the thing that gets you through it. Um, it wasn't easy though. I mean, you kind of you see the end product. You don't realize the amount of time and effort and the work that goes into that. It's um, it's. Yeah, it's pretty hardcore. Yeah, yeah, it really is, and and it came out brilliantly. But the the thing about this is, guys, he did it for a short period of time for a certain goal, and then he went back to eating healthy. And it, so it's it's one of those things, you know. And even when he lost the weight, as difficult as it was, as a struggle as it was, he did it safely, consistently over time, and was monitored, you know. So that's like. That's the important thing. Nothing is more important than your health. You know, no rules, nothing like that. Because if you're ill, you can't do anything. You know, health is key. So Elliot played that and there's makeup involved and things like that too, which makes you look even more gaunt and emaciated. So just remember guys, it's incredible to go to those lengths to really live in a, in a character, but always put your health first. Nothing, nothing is worth, worth that. And Elliot did it a brilliant way, right? Let's talk about being out of work. Do you know, how, how do you deal with, because everyone deals with it differently and I'm sure you deal with it differently to me. It doesn't matter who you are, all actors, whether it's, I don't know, Tom Hardy or Leonardo DiCaprio, some point in their careers, and even now, they go through a period where they're out of work. You know, it's just one of those things. So how do you deal with the downtime, the time in between? <laughs> Um, yeah, I mean, it's difficult. I find that, uh, you know, if I'm preparing for a role, at least you've got something to do in that downtime. Mm -hmm. But when there is nothing, and I mean, I, I've had I've had times where I think the longest period was, it was way over a year, like, of nothing. Not an audition, not one. And it's, it's one of those things that you mentally, I, I don't know if everyone can go through it. It's, mm -hmm. actors, you, you have to deal with that kind of thing. It's something you just have to, you have to get used to and, and that hopefully, that those spaces in time will become shorter and they'll become easier. Yeah. I have become a bit more like relaxed about it recently. I'm like, it's a time yeah, off, I'm going to yeah. enjoy it. You've got but, the um, momentum going, it's, it's, it's your time, you know, yeah. you put in the effort, you're earning what you deserve and it's great. It's, it's very difficult though, I find <laughs> that um, when you're not used to that, when I first started doing it, I was just not even auditioning, it was, it was like you're kind of there twiddling your thumbs and you know, everyone else is at work, everyone has got their nine to five and you're there like, what am I doing? What am I, what doing? Am I doing? I've got no money. Yeah. I, you know, I'm not doing the thing I want to do. I'm kind of twiddling my thumbs and I'm just end up watching TV all day. But yeah. that is exactly what you shouldn't yeah. do. I mean, I find, you, yeah, yeah, I basically find that if I can do other things that are involved with acting, like in ter in terms of like with the business, as long as you can, I write in my spare time. So if mm. I have a bit of downtime, even if it's a couple of hours, I'm waiting for an audition. I, you know, typing up, but it's important like even though your goal is say acting mine is solely acting but I you know I, I really there are projects that I want to get off the ground that I want to be involved with maybe producing or yeah. directing um, and even though the acting is the number one goal I think it's really important to try and have as many strings to your bow as you possibly can and, and you will end up enjoying it because overall it is you know still working in the same industry and it's something that you're passionate about absolutely so there you go guys when you're in that downtime when it's not happening for you it should always still be happening but we all go through this this period so what Elliot did what a lot of smart tenacious actors do is they become creators they start to write and it just makes you a more rounded artist you know you develop skills and strings and balls to your arsenal that you never knew existed which Elliot will have will have realized and he's actually wrote a show he's wrote a few shows but there's one that's gonna get off the ground very soon called no hopers which I've had a look at the trailer and I've read the script and again the guy's an actor who started writing and he's actually developed an incredible skill for the art of screenwriting too which which is incredible so tell us a bit about no hopers so no hope is it came about as I said before, you know, having that time and having, you know, hours and days where you're just like, oh, yeah. what am I going to do? I haven't had an audition. So I kind of thought, right, um, 
I want to write something. And I, I, I had a difficult time at school um, being dyslexic. And you know, there are a lot of actors in the industry that are dyslexic, famously Tom Cruise, people like that. Um, and I just thought, if I could write about that, something that kind of write about what you know. Yeah. Um, so I, I sat down and I, I started writing about my first day mm. at, um, at a school that changed my life. Um, and it kind of branched out into this. I'm now written four part drama. Um, each episode is 45 minutes. And um, it's basically about a kid's first term at a special needs school and, and you know, the struggles that not only he goes through, but the, the struggles that his parents financially go through to put him into this school. And it's not only is it a drama, but it's kind of, it's, um, it's brutally honest. And, and from that comes comedy as well. Mm. Um, and for me, being dyslexic, I never thought I would, I never even dreamed that I would write because um, mm. it comes doesn't come very easily to me. Yeah. Um, so actually to have this finished product and then send it off to various people to get vetted and have yeah. people like look at it um, and they were telling me that how great it is and it gave me real confidence and now like I'm now that I'm writing the later episodes it's it's amazing how with that confidence and once you know that you can do it and it's been vetted by other people you you become way more confident and it becomes easier as well uh, I found like starting that starting to write was hard but actually now I really enjoy it just yeah. something I never did at school. I hated, yeah. you know, I hated writing, I hated English because um, I found it so difficult. That's incredible. And there he's just touched on being persistent. Anything that's worth doing, guys, is going to be difficult. But if you stick with it, you stick with a problem, eventually that difficulty becomes beautiful. Elliot found that he hated writing, but it was a necessity. He had to do it to, to release that creative, creative, I don't know, creative juices to get to where he wanted to get and he's now found that he actually truly enjoys it and something brilliant is coming of it so how important do you think it is to to access that creativity and, and really push through those those barriers I think that you know if you're not finding the jobs that you want to do as an actor um, as I said before you know if you can find other avenues other yeah. things that you want to do I think it's very important I, yeah. I think you just get in a rut and yeah it can be it's not good for your health you end up not doing the things that you want to do and um, it can be very frustrating and I think you end up just uh, we were saying before like you end up sitting around on IMDB looking yeah. at what other actors are doing things that you want to be doing and you're kind of jealous and it things just spiral. Don't do that. Yeah don't don't sit there don't and do go on that. IMDB that is the worst thing you can do. <laughs> so, um, yeah I think I think it's important like if you're if you're struggling to do the thing you want to do say acting um, if there is another thing that you think oh, I could you know yeah. I could give it a go I mean, why not you've got the time to do it yeah. so do it that's it there's a there's a great quote from Charlie Munger he's a billionaire investor he says you've got to earn what you deserve the world is not yet a crazy enough place to reward a bunch of undeserving people I went through that, Elliot went through that, where we sat around and we blamed our agents, we were like, the phone's not ringing, it's not happening, blah, blah, blah. we were blaming everyone else, nah, it's up to you, it's up to me, it's up to Elliot and every other actor to create for themselves, to show the world that, look, I really love doing this, this is what I've got to offer, Let, let's make a go of it. So that's what you've got to do, you've got to be proactive, you've got to be tenacious, you've got to push through those barriers. And the worst thing you can do is is lay the blame outside of yourself and think that the world owes you a favour. Because all that will do is make you bitter and you just won't achieve, you won't achieve your true potential. So Elliot, what's, now that you're on this roller coaster and you've gone through that, that, that I don't know, the, the twilight zone, what's next for you? What's coming up? Um... <laughs> No, it's, it's been really good actually, like the last, since we did Northern Soul, which we actually shot um, 2012, so you know, it's, it's been a while now. Um, and it's funny because you finish a film like that and you, you think, oh, you know, I've just been leading this film with Steve Coogan, you know, you think, I'm going to get more auditions. It didn't happen until the film came out. And you know, that again was time that How I was long? sitting around. It was like over a year, it was like a year and a half, two years. Um, and you know, you're sitting there twiddling your thumbs, but finally, um, I signed with Curtis Brown, who, you know, it was an agent that I always, I always wanted to sign with. He's one of the big ones, one of the ones yeah. that I'd really mm. strive to achieve. And, and um, signed with them, and, and things became, I wouldn't say easy, because it's never been easy, and it never will be easy, but it, it that certainly became easier um, than it had been. And um, now I'm going for roles that I'm really like thinking, wow, if I could get this, this would be mm. amazing. 
Um, I've been very fortunate to do um, to do two films this year. Um, one is a sci-fi um, set in LA, and I play this kind of a bit of a arsehole nah. character. <laughs> I'm like this cheeky womanizer, um, and it's really cool because it's so different to Northern Soul. It was just great to, yeah. and especially to play an American part. I mean, it's something that you kind of, as a kid, you're always watching American yeah. films. Um, and it, yeah, it was something I've always wanted to do. So I've got that, which I think is going to be coming out. I think it's next year, next summer, um, and it's going to apparently they're transferring it to 3D. So it's going to be a like awesome. completely different That's sort of thing. That's brilliant. Um, and then I, I did. Um, I just finished filming a, a film called Beautiful Devils, which is um, it's a modern day adaptation of Othello, um, and I get to play. Um, Basically, the the main horrible bad guy in the film is called um, Ivan, but in the original um, original play, he's called Iago. So um, if you're familiar with that, you'll know the character. But he's great role. He manipulates all the characters and manipulates Othello and, and makes everyone turn in on each other. Um, and that was a fantastic role to play. Um, maybe one of the maybe the the most enjoyable role because it was. Just such a nasty, horrible character, and he's so different to the yeah. character you've just played on yeah. Northern Soul. So it, it, you're getting to stretch that instrument yeah, and yeah, show sure. people how diverse you are. You know, that's mm. that's absolutely great. Yeah, it's a, yeah, you know, completely different look again, and I, that's what I strive to do: to try and do things that are a bit different and and um, surprise the audience, I guess. Um, yeah, I mean that, that's the aim, isn't it? Really, to to do something people don't expect you to do. Um, that's acting. Yeah, you know exactly. that. That's exactly. That's what all actors wish to do, and you're doing it, and it's well, well deserved. So, finally, if you were to give a young Elliot Landridge <laughs> now, knowing what you know now, career advice, what would you tell him? Um, see, I look back on things that I don't ever think that I made a mistake because everything that I did led to this moment and at the moment I'm really happy with where I am in my career mm. but I would give the advice of starting younger in terms of like <coughs> adding strings to my bow so I would have started writing earlier yeah um, I would have been more proactive and I wouldn't have as you say sit around and blame your agent for being you know not getting you enough jobs enough auditions I would have I would have tried to do other things on the side and to tr just to try and do anything that can, can get you parts to get you motivated and and keep you like doing the thing you want to do really so yeah for sure I would I would have been more proactive at an earlier age and yeah. <clears throat> to be honest I probably would have started earlier as well I was 19 mm. when I started acting so um, I think as much time as you can have is probably yeah. the best because it's not you know as most of you probably know it's not an easy an easy life to get in involved with the sort of thing so it's you know you've just got to do anything and yeah. everything um, yeah just give it, it your all it's certainly not easy but you know if you want to do it you will go out and do it Elliot was 19 when he started I was 24 when I went to drama college so it's just one of those things well guys if you want to know anything about Northern Soul No Hopers or anything that Elliot's getting up to there's gonna be links down below below this video if you want to follow Elliot on Twitter, Instagram, follow his Facebook page, all those links will also be down below. Any questions you got for Elliot, myself, or anything about the projects that we're doing, feel free to comment and we'll answer them straight away or inbox me, whichever you please. Please don't forget to like and share this video if you found it useful. If you didn't, share it anyway because I'm sure someone will, someone you know will find this useful. And comments are always welcome. You know, I want to I wanna help as many people as I can, you know, do what they love doing. And this just isn't for actors, you know. This is for anyone who's got a goal, who's got a vision, who just doesn't know how to get started, yeah? So like, share, comment, and I'll catch you guys next week. Peace.